Good afternoon and thank you for stepping into the file playland. As always, I'm your file player. Wanted to make a quick video regarding the NFL draft and my comparison or my preference for one prospect versus the other. And the only reason I'm making this video is because I think um, people have overrated a certain prospect and I don't want to say underrated a, another prospect, but uh, I just find that one prospect is better than the other. And I think one may get first round consideration, but I know for sure that the prospect that I don't think is uh, as good in Javon Kinlaw deserves that first round consideration. Um, but I'll get into the logistics of it. Um, Javon Kinlaw, as everybody knows, South Carolina defensive tackle. I think he's uh, 6'5". Probably weighs like 330 as of the combine or a hair under 330. Ross Blacklock, same position out of TCU. Um, he has played against lesser competition. I mean, um, you know, you're talking about playing against Texas, which Texas had a good team this year. Like, um, even though they didn't end up um, well ranked, but they had a good team coming out the gate this year. They played Purdue. Purdue had an okay team. But uh, South Carolina plays way better competition. But um, having said all that, uh, Ross Blacklock with uh, the TCU defensive tackle weighs about 290, a little bit over 290 in the combine, and he's 6'3". Um, Ken Law, a lot of people have him going as high as like... Um, I've seen some drafts that had him going uh, ahead of the Jets, which I'm very in tune with the Jets um, draft news. As you all know, I like the Jets and I like the Giants. Um, I have, But most people have him at that 13 um, threshold, right after Derrick Brown, as far as somebody, a team needing a defensive tackle, like the Lions, or if they were to trade down. or. But uh, I don't see it. I mean... Um, and it's not like um like I'd be drooling over Blacklock, but I just think that Blacklock is the superior prospect. What I also will say too is that um because I want to do this video about another prospect that I think is getting um overdue um is getting um not overdue but overvalued is that um one second, let me turn off this alarm. Is that um but one thing, what I will say before I even get into that is that um, I think a lot of times, sorry guys, I don't know why my wife has an alarm set up at 3.30 um, a.m., I mean p.m., but um, I don't, um, I think a lot of people jump the gun with um, drafting defensive tackles. I think you could find defensive tackles in the free agency market all the time, um, i.e. like uh, Snacks Harrison. Snacks Harrison for a while was the best run defender in the entire league. And uh, a lot of people would underplay that, but uh, you don't usually get a lot of sack production from your defensive tackles anyhow. Um, you know, you're getting like three sacks out of your defensive tackles per year, and that's like on, av like on average. Some good defensive tackles will give you three sacks in a year. But uh, you usually want that run defense or are going to get that run defense from that defensive tackle. And if you would have signed a Snacks Harrison, who at the point where he did sign was um, the best run defender in the entire league, probably. He's probably getting like eight million bucks. So you could go into the into free agency and get a good to serviceable or really a good or really good defensive tackle and not have to uh, break the bank um, for it. And uh, there's a lot of good defensive tackles that come out of every draft. Even the bummy, like, th this is not a good defensive tackle class, like, um, Derek Brown aside. But um, I just think that a lot of people, like, I personally, if I were a GM, I would be very hard-pressed to draft a defensive tackle at a um, in the first round, even if it's low first round. Um in most cases. Now, like, there are exceptions, like, uh, like, and Aaron Donald, I mean, like, I knew he was going 
give you some sort of push in that um, back end of the pocket. I, I, you know, of course, I'm, I would take Aaron Donald if I, especially if I needed a, a defensive tackle. But if I were um, picking like eleven or twelve, I would pick him above that if if I needed a defensive tackle personally. But if I were picking uh, fifteen or some shit per se, and he's there, I, yeah, I'm gonna take him. But um, would I take Kinlaw? Like I wouldn't take Kinlaw with the thirtieth pick if I had the thirtieth pick. And nor would I take Ross Blacklock with the thirtieth pick if I had the thirtieth pick. Like I just think that you could um, make that kind of production um, elsewhere. But I will get into the grim of glory. Uh, Kinlaw, even though he is 330 pounds, I've seen Kinlaw get sunned in many games. Kinlaw get sunned on one on ones in many games. There was a Georgia game I was just watching. He was getting beat the whole game. It was. It seemed like he only had like one good play in that game, and it was like a run behind, like a, a stop right behind the line of scrimmage on a, on a running play. Um, and I, I mean, like you know, he's gonna be in on every play, sure, but um, is is that the kind of production you want from a defensive tackle, like almost getting a sack or holding the point of attack um, at the line of scrimmage, not getting any sort of push at the line of scrimmage? You know, um, we could make that, like the Jets made that mistake in drafting uh, Williams out of USC number six overall in, in um, a couple years ago. And the Giants made the mistake of trading for that bum um, and now paying him sixteen and a half million, like, and everybody um, agrees that he doesn't deserve that kind of money, and that um, he's uh, not a bust, but he didn't live up to the draft e- draft expectation. And I think uh, Ken Law in a lot of games was worse than um, than uh, Williams of the Giants and once of the Jets. But uh, I don't think he uses his hands well. I think he. Um, Plays short after the 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 whistle. I mean, uh, what like or uh, once the play uh starts, I don't think he takes up a lot of space and plays. I think he plays short. He plays very skinny. He um doesn't have as much power as Blacklock, and I think Blacklock has. Be- um, this is all on Kinlaw, but um, I don't think he provides you any sort of push in the like um and crushes pockets, like very little, very little. Like I mean, like. You look at um, Blacklock play and look at him play, it just seems like Blacklock's the taller guy, the bigger guy. And that's not the case. He got Blacklock by almost 40 pounds, and he got Blacklock by two inches. He got longer arms than Blacklock. And uh, Black, like, I mean, like, you, you, he'll disappear on a lot of plays. You don't even know where the guy is. He has no impact on a lot of plays. Blacklock at least um, uses his hands well. I think they should work on his feet once he gets to the next level, but he moves like where he wants to move. He doesn't get moved. That Georgia game I just told you that I watched for um, with uh, Kinlaw. I mean, like they were one on ones where the guy was getting tossed around. I mean, like um, not literally tossed around, but he was providing no push. So I mean, if it were um, drafting uh, Blacklock, if I was a uh, defensive tackle needy team. And I um, and it was brought to me to take Kinlaw or Blacklock. I'd go Blacklock all the way. It's not even close. I wouldn't um, say, for instance, the Jets. If um, and I, I know this is not going to happen, but if Kinlaw were there um, in the second round, I wouldn't take him. I'd pass right over him. I mean, um, and it's it. I mean, and it's more, I guess it's more me. Like, I mean, like, if you want to think I'm wrong about all this, you go ahead. But, um, but, um, it's just that the position doesn't merit that. I mean, and I'm going to go into this tirade about linebackers too in the, in my, uh, next video. And I'm going to do a comparison or, um, I'm going to pick why I think a certain linebacker is better than other linebacker. But I can say the same thing about line, a lot of linebackers. And I think defensive tackles are worse. I think defensive tackles give you um, less impact with what the guys you're getting into the NFL. There's not that many good defensive tackles like that um, that I would break the bank for. And a lot of guys that I would break the bank for, like or like not break the bank for, that I think are really good, like um, and I thought were really good coming out of college, like got drafted in the third round a lot of times. I mean, I thought Aaron Donald was a beast coming out of college, but been a while since uh 
Aaron Donald came out of uh, college. Like, um, and if there's one thing I get wrong, it's definitely not defensive tackles. I know I could tell a good defensive tackle when I see one. And uh, Javon Kinlaw is not it. And Ross Blacklock is not great either. I mean, he's good, but I wouldn't take him in the in the um, in the uh, first round. But I, what I was gonna say before is that if uh, Kinlaw, for it, per se, fell to the Jets. In the uh, second round, and I think the Jets are picking um, in the middle of the second round. I wouldn't take him. I'd go right over him. I, re, and even if we had a sort of need, I mean, if we had a bit of a need, yeah, I, I could see working with him. But he's a he to me. He strikes me as a third round talent or late second round talent, and definitely not somebody that I would take if I was the Jets or Giants. I, but I don't think they're gonna take him. But actually, uh, the Giants might take him because. Uh, um, Gettleman's obsex, uh, obsession with uh, hog hog Molly, but he's not the guy, man. Like I mean, like, and I, I if I'm wrong, I, like I was sort of wrong on Desta Lawrence. I thought he was just a good player, but um, coming out of college, and I was pissed that we drafted him because there were other needs, and it was more because there were other needs there, like at that 19th pick um last year, not so much that I thought um. Lawrence was a bad player, but Kinlaw is a lot better than Dexter Lawrence. Ten times, I mean, not ten times. I mean, he's 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 a lot better than Dexter Lawrence. I'll just I, I don't want to overblow it, but um, there's so many players that I would draft above him that it's not even funny. But um, I want to make another video. Uh, my next video it's gonna be comparing uh, Patrick Queen. With a, um, I'm not going to say Kenneth Murray, because I mean, Kenneth Murray is a lot better than Patrick Queen, I think. But uh, a lot of people have Patrick Queen going number like 10 in that same area. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to, and I don't want to do a disservice to the man and or, or to my two subscribers. But um, I want to watch a little bit more Patrick Queen tape, though I've watched a significant amount. But um, whew, I would not draft that man. Um... May I I, I want to reserve my judgment, man. But right now, it, it, he's a late first rounder, and he might he might be dropping in the uh, in the foul play uh, land um, spectrum. He he looks like a second rounder so thus far. I mean, and it's not that I think Kenneth Murray's the the the, stu the the business either, man. But like you know, we, some people overvalue uh, positions uh, come draft time. Um, and linebackers don't have a lot of impact in games, and I tell people this sometimes too. And the, and like, well, same thing with defensive tackles, for instance. Like uh, a lot of people, I say, oh, you know, I don't think this guy um, is worth it. You know, or if he were to drop to our second first round pick, I don't think he's worth it. And then, um, like, so for instance, uh, linebackers. Then they say, oh, what about Luke Kuechly? What if he, like, you know. Um, and I said, you know, like, oh, what, like, you know, he, he, this guy is going to, it could be like, or like, or I say, you know, I don't think linebackers merit monetarily a lot of love that they get sometimes or um, draft stock that they get sometimes. And people will say, oh, what if he's the next Luke Keekley? Yeah. I, and I always tell people, you know, how many Luke Keekleys are in the league right now? How many people are, are comparable to Luke Keekley? Like there's not that many dyna dynamo linebackers like and then you know you got linebackers that are more like uh boxy you know um play more against the run and you know tear your head off like in the middle of the field then there's coverage linebackers and like there's not too many people that encompass both and there's not that many people that are like excellent at both in the league right now and there's a lot of guys like in this draft I mean Isaiah Simmons yeah he's a beast and um Kenneth Murray looks pretty good, but, um, you know, as much as I like Kenneth Murray, he's not a make or break guy. Like, I mean, he's not going to make your team like significantly better, um, year one, you know, like it's, and you got a lot of guys in this draft and last, look at last year's draft that could impact Debo Samuel, like dropping down and, you know, he created a large impact out the gate. And I'll give you another example. Like when Jalen Smith came out of the draft, like for the Dallas linebacker. And this is more like a uh, thing about like there's certain positions that are just overvalued. And I'm going to go into this one too about in-the-box safeties and strong safeties. Um, 
that they are, and and I think strong safeties have more impact, but um, it's just that you can't um, overcompensate or build it, like think you're building a team around strong safeties like the Jets are. But um, so going back to linebackers. Jalen Smith of the Cowboys. I thought Jalen Smith, if he would have not got injured, would have been a strong candidate to be taken number one overall, overall in his draft a couple years ago. Yes, I thought that draft was trash. I thought that was one of the worst drafts that I ever um, looked at. But uh, Jalen Smith was a beast, man. Like Jalen Smith um, played like a like a strong safety when you needed him to. Um. But uh, for a little guy, he could hit. He knocked. He had a good nose for the ball, and he still plays that way. But uh, is Jalen Smith the um, on a Dallas team that is? I mean, last year they had a, a really good. They had a pretty good defense. But Jalen Smith might be the fourth best defensive player on the Cowboys last year, maybe. And this is a guy that I would say that was I, I thought was number one overall. Like I I could have been number one overall in that in the draft that he came out in, had he not gotten injured in the bowl game, um, when he played for Notre Dame. But um, you know, I just think that like it's hard to it's really really hard to have an impact in the defensive tackle spot, or as a strong safety, or as a uh, linebacker. You know, you really got to have like. All your bases covered, like you know, um, as far as your abilities, um, at those positions, um, and I think that when you have other needs or like that, uh, you should look elsewhere. You could find those players if you know what you're doing. But uh, I don't want to get too long winded into that. Like I want to make other videos regarding the topic, and I don't want to say the same stuff come on uh, my next videos. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I take uh black lock all the way, better hands, uh better feet, better movement. Um constantly moves, gets behind the pocket and um Kilo does none of that like in my eyes. So let me know what you guys think and with that, I'm out. Thank you for checking this stepping into the foul playland. Peace.